I'm off to another business trip to Cebu, and with the amount of cargo I need to bring, I'm taking along three of my subscribers to accompany me on a quick trip taking Philippine Airlines to the Queen City and budget carrier Cebu Pacific back to Manila, comparing services on both airlines, and going on a food trip over authentic and mouth-watering Lechon Cebu during a quick turnaround in between flights. Find out what's new on both carriers now that air travel has been picking up lately right here on Airline Travel and Airports. So I'm back at the airport for my usual sideline, bringing along three of my subscribers as I do another cargo run for a client in Cebu. It's not the usual routine as I often fly alone and you can tell that things are happening differently today, having to bring more check-in items than usual, being greeted by a cheerful airport staff with a song and dance number, and employees being friendlier to the only few passengers found at this terminal. Now that includes me and my travel buddies. Soon as check-in agent Glipstone hands out our boarding passes, we head straight to the gate and onto a shuttle bus that'll take us to our aircraft. Nope, not on this A330, which has remained idle here for almost a year, but seeing it along the way is still a magnificent sight to see. With Philippine Airlines having about four flights per day to Cebu, PAL instead deploys a smaller A321 aircraft, which is what we're taking today. With four of us flying together, this sure feels like a field trip. Anyhow, we were told that flight isn't full, which is good for me and my friends who are seated at the back, as we'll have all the space and privacy in this one-hour flight. That also means that we can freely stand up and move around, as most of the occupied seats are often concentrated up front. Passengers continued to come in brought by shuttle buses, and right after safety demo, we were up in the air before we knew it. Now one thing you'd notice on a full-service carrier like Philippine Airlines is that once it reaches cruising altitude, you'll see crew members moving with their carts along the aisle, handing out snacks and drinks to passengers. With cost-cutting measures during pandemic, snacks are now limited to bottled water and a small pack of dried mangoes. Well, it's better than nothing. But for those who wish to have something heavier to fill their tummy, bringing your own food is permitted as those packs of dried mangoes won't be enough, especially if you missed breakfast before taking your flight. PAL allows you to bring your own food on board, which can be bought near the departure gates before you board the plane. It's a short flight, and soon crew members prepare the cabin for landing. After a few turns during descent, we were on final approach and soon touching down at Mactan Cebu International Airport. Okay, with PAL's ticket prices a bit high that time, we were forced to take budget carrier Cebu Pacific back to Manila, which leaves in about two hours from now. So we need to move fast and deliver our cargo and do our check-in right after that. At baggage claim, we collect all our items, making sure everything's placed in our carts and we proceed quickly to exit arrivals. From there, we head off a little further. That's where we eventually hand in all the stuff, accomplishing our mission for this trip and then making it back to the terminal to meet our friend Josh, whom we invited on a sumptuous lunch of lechon belly within the airport. Cebu is known to offer the tastiest lechon in the entire country, and we're simply happy to have some here shared among friends. After a quick lunch, we immediately head off to departures, making our way through initial security check and into Cebu Pacific's check-in counters. Surprisingly, the process was very quick as handled by a helpful check-in agent. After that, we make our way to the gates, with each of us having to stop in front of scanning machines where we had our boarding passes verified before proceeding to another security check. Now I'm used to flying PAL, where I'd proceed and wait in an area with not too many passengers. Today's a different routine, and I head off to one side of the terminal where budget carrier Cebu Pacific's flight to Manila can be found. And during its quick turnaround, we can't help talking to pilots on a deadhead flight to Manila. 
Meanwhile, there are no elite status or privileges in Cebu Pacific's rewards program and all will have to get called to line up for boarding based on your seat number. Now I understand about how you'd board a plane with all that crowd as Cebu Pacific would offer competitive fares against other carriers. And choosing to fly Cebu Pacific today is something I've just conditioned myself for. As I stepped into Cebu Pacific's A321neo aircraft, I'm also warmly greeted the way crew members at Philippine Airlines do. I guess it's that hospitable trait Filipinos have that makes you feel welcome and at home regardless which Philippine-based carrier you take. Anyhow, as I walked along the aisle, it felt like there are plenty of seats inside this cabin. I'm sure by now you know why I love sitting at the back. And before anything else, it's time to interact again with the crew. It's good to hear from crew members themselves that air travel is somewhat picking up. And since I rarely fly Cebu Pacific, I just had to ask some things specially about their seats. I heard that all seats in this aircraft are fixed in an angle and don't recline. And true enough, that was the case. But what makes up from a little loss of comfort, as the flight attendant pointed out, was the presence of USB charging ports, which is very much helpful in juicing up your gadgets during flight. In terms of legroom, I didn't mind the tight spaces, as this will only be a short flight. And as much as we hope to have some privacy from unoccupied seats at the back, the cabin was simply filling up. But what I really enjoyed during boarding is my time conversing with crew members at the back and getting some insights. While I still had the time, I took the chance to explore a bit more, checking out the rear galley and noticing where lavatories are and how its setup varies compared to the previous airline we took earlier. And stepping inside, one can really tell that this is a new and well-maintained aircraft. Honestly, I'm impressed about how neat and innovative it looks, other than it really smells new. And to what I know, lavatories are disinfected, so there's nothing much to worry about on breaks to the restroom. Okay, so more and more passengers come in that the cabin seems tightly packed other than becoming quite smaller. It's what expected flying a budget carrier. Meanwhile, let's explore a bit more as I don't get to fly aboard Cebu Pacific as often as I do on Philippine Airlines. Tray tables are a bit smaller but nonetheless clean. Safety cards with simple illustrations are found in each seat pocket. They're bigger and even a child can understand its instructions based on its drawings. Other than that, there are no magazines available from what it's used to. But there are air sickness bags, three of them in my seat pocket, as if saying that we're gonna have a bumpy ride and I'll be needing all these. Hopefully not. By then, crew members begin cabin preparations, as Cebu Pacific is known to do quick turnarounds. And sure enough, our plane is being pushed back from the gate with safety demo performed as we do so. With our plane now taxiing forward, passing by magnificent views of aircraft outside our windows, it didn't take long for our plane to position itself in the runway. We were taking off soon and we were going home. Again, we were back in the air, as if we only went to Cebu to have lechon for lunch. Tired, we can only sit and enjoy the view of the cloud and listen to what the announcement is all about. We'd also like to inform you that the seats are not equipped with recline buttons. These seats are already set at a predefined position for your comfort. As an added feature, there is an even power supply with a USB outlet found under your seat or in front of you to charge your portable electronic devices free of charge during the flight. Well, I don't really mind if seats here don't recline. What I was actually waiting for is when crew members will be rolling out their carts to sell food and souvenir items. For the longest time I've been here in my seat, there were no carts rolled out. I guess with the ongoing pandemic, no items are sold as part of safety measures. We can only instead enjoy the scenic view of the clouds. One can ask to purchase items such as bottled water, but as soon as I found out about it, crew members were going around in preparation for landing. And so we continued to descend, with the magnificent view of Taal Volcano showing up in sight. Flight attendants are seen again along the aisle, this time doing their final safety check. It was only a matter of minutes till our plane eventually touches down at Manila International Airport.
back home. And since we're taking Cebu Pacific, our plane makes its way to Terminal 3, passing by Terminal 2, where we passed through earlier today. Being the last flight today from Cebu, we were told that we will be taking the shuttle bus to the terminal instead of connecting it through an air bridge. It's alright, while passengers take time to disembark, I make my way to the rear galley to ask permission if we can take some pictures with the pilots before we go. I know sometimes requests are turned down depending on the situation, but today we just had to give it a shot and see if me and my friends are lucky enough to have souvenir photos at the flight deck. With a bit of chit chat with crew members, we were then allowed to move to the forward section of the cabin where we waited for the captain's go signal if we're welcome to make a quick visit at the flight deck. Well, today's a lucky day for me and my subscribers. We were expecting we'd be taking photos only at the door, but instead, we were each called to have our pictures taken seated with the captain. For an aspiring pilot like Kenneth, this is definitely motivating. And so we took turns having our photos taken, with travel buddy Luis getting the best shots he can take, while we all savored our quick time at the flight deck. Many thanks to the flight crew for this wonderful opportunity. Now we gotta disembark fast, as we don't want to be having our fellow passengers waiting as we were taking the shuttle bus. And as we did, we were thanking crew members along the way for helping us with our request. And so our same day return trip has come to an end. With our mission done, we can only share our stories to the pilots we met and listen to how their flights went today. So what's the verdict? Each carrier has strengths in terms of service. Both tried its best to cater to passengers, especially at the time of pandemic. What matters is that flying with each of them was safe and comfortable, and our experience with both carriers today was fun and hassle-free. Along with Luis, Rodney, and Kenneth, this is Mitch Young. Thank you very much for watching.